Hello and welcome to another Rover 1 video where I spend countless hours building an unpractical practical Jeep. Now in this video you may have noticed it is a bit longer because this is the director's cut, if you will, of the entire Jeep YJ body repair, prep, and paint. Now this body is off the frame and so if you're going to do this it's probably recommended that you take the body off the frame. It took me about a week to do that. So uh, there'll be a little bit of time invested. But let's say it's off your frame. This will be the entire video from start to finish. What you have to do with fixing up this body. Uh, currently, it's it's got some rust on it. I just took off the body mounts, which most of them broke off, so they'll be stuck inside. So I have to do some cutting in the floor, which you might have seen on some YouTube videos, because Jeep did a very terrible job locating the body mounts. They They're not serviceable. So once they're rusted off and break off, you have to cut into the body just to... It's almost like it's a prop Jeep in a film. This was once a driving vehicle, believe it or not. All right, here it is in its glory. Yeah. Behind the driver's seat, there is this body mount here. That's all rotted through completely. Now, I don't trust putting the entire weight of the Jeep on stuff like this, so I hope to flip it up on its side and reinforce the heck out of the body mount areas. I will be extending the body and adding aluminum walls. I don't know how thick the aluminum walls are going to be, but it's going to be adding a whole heck of a lot of weight. And then I'll be adding the cage on top of that, the exo cage, which will be tied into the frame, but also it'll be extra weight. And then all the stuff. So it's important to have really strong body mounts. These mounts back here, it's hard to see, but there's a bolt there. Apparently you have to go... <clears throat> to cut into this piece. Literally cut it and split it open to get at the inside of that bolt. On the passenger side, there's this little hump. That's where the bolt and nut is. So you gotta cut this off, open it up so you can get access to it, bend it all back together and weld it. So if you don't have access to a welder, this isn't the greatest job for you, which sucks. So thanks again, Jeep. These roll bars, when I extend the Jeep, it's going to come out to, I don't know, here, I'm guessing. So the roll bar is going to look really funny. So I'm going to delete this piece and add new roll bar. Like that. And who knows, maybe I'll put one in between. But anyway, that's unrelated. So without any further ado, let's get started. I'm fixing this godforsaken cow, this wretched old bitch. It's got holes all over in this damn thing. There's holes over here, that's 415, and then all along here and there's holes over there too. And here's the most notable ones, they go right through. I tried poking at it with a knife and there is zero strength left in that rust, absolutely zero. So I devised an idea. I've got some 26 inch gauge, or 26 gauge, or whatever gauge it says, sheet metal. I'm gonna sh put it up like that, get another strip, and go over top. So that'll cover the holes, add some strength to this thing and it'll be good to go. For the areas that I can't reach with this, because I only have that much left, I will just use some seam sealer, and that'll just be kind of over here, and kind of over here. But first, I gotta clean all of this up to make it weld ready. R weld ready. Uh, I'm gonna pour 15 metal prep that to neutralize the rust, and then vacuum the hell out of in here, because that is a wretched mess.
pour 15 degreased, pour 15 metal prepped, and rinsed to the best of my ability. Right now, I could paint that no problem. It is butt naked clean, but instead, I'm gonna get those strips of metal and see if I can't weld them on. I don't know if I'll be able to weld to this. Right after these messages. Only one person has to. Why? <laughs> we got the double oh leg guys. Cool. <laughs> Glad to see this. This is the most amazing thing ever. Where the fuck are you? <laughs> oh, look at this. Look at this chicken. We got the double leg guys. Look at look at this chicken. Look oh yeah. Well, I know what you can do. Wait, hold on. Move out the way. What? What the fuck? <laughs> Is this here? Look at this. I have an army. <laughs> Look at them all. Well, I have a brother. <laughs> Let's go. So this is what I've decided to do. Cut six inch strips, they're one and a half inch uh, tall, and I'm just welding them up like this. You gotta be careful not to weld too much because I don't know what's behind here, if it's wires, plastic, that kind of stuff that can start fire on the inside. The whole point of this is to seal the hole. I'm only tacking this on, and then I'm seam sealing everything else. Not only will it add strength to this, but it, I think it will enhance the look of the vehicle once it's done. The Rover One is a apocalyptic style vehicle. Adds to the look. Would you believe that that's the rest of the cowl? So that is it done. Looks pretty rugged and badass if you ask me. I scratched up the entire cowl. I decided I'm going to paint it the same color as the doors. And I might give it a clear coat. Uh, top coat to help protect it. Now we see why I put that 2x4 up there. There's supposed to be two 2x4s. Two so I don't know where the other one went. But imagine if that 2x4 wasn't there, how much of a puddle would be collecting right now. Let's go check on the other one. Oh, yeah. Papers. This is why I need a garage. It is beautiful though. just a few minutes already the Broad Street Bridge is six foot deep of water and we're trudging through some water here oh that's so cool okay welcome to another day what I'm doing today is prepping this entire cow paint so what that means is cleaning the hell out of it with some degreaser followed by seam sealing, prepping the rest of the area with degreaser slash metal prep, scratching it up, making sure it's ready for paint, then painting with a duplicolor acrylic enamel semi-gloss or gloss, I don't know what this is. I'm gonna start with some degreaser. Blue towel this off. Next step, gonna be remove these wiper things. Uh, I'm assuming they're connected underneath. I managed to snake that through the hole with a pair of needle nose, but I can't find the other one. No idea where the hell it is, so I'm just not gonna worry about that for the time being. Next on the list of things to do is to take these off. All right, so I'm, I'm done with trying to hand sand all this stuff out, but there's a few things in here that I wanna grind out so that it leaves me with some bare metal. Alright, I got these nice and clean. Everything looks like it's smooth enough, scratched up enough. This watery crap on top is the Pour 15 Metal Prep. 
it's going to etch the metal a little bit to help the paint stick. In the meantime, I've washed this off with water, and now I'm just going to put some seam sealer on. Okay, let's try this out. Looks like dog shit if you're doing actual body work, but for the purposes of this Jeep, I think it'll do just fine. Okay, it is paint day. It is also wind day, apparently. It is really, really windy out today. I've got all of this area clean to a crisp. I degreased one more time, rinsed with water, and dried the hell out of this area with a uh, little bit of compressed air. You wouldn't believe how much water gets left behind even when you think you've dried it all with rags. Check this out. In these areas here, in these areas, in these areas, water just comes pouring out of here. In these areas, I left this seal on because I'm replacing it anyway in the future. So no bother painting this area. So I don't have a seal right now. These areas, under the hinges, between the hinges, Compressed air is your friend when it comes to painting, that's for sure. I'm going to try and pop open that can of Core 15. Hopefully I can do it. If not, I did get a can of the Rust Reformer trimmed by a trim pad or a rust -Oleum, So, And then once that dries after two coats, I'll put on the Duple Color Acrylic. I think it should work out pretty good. Inside this can, after not being sealed properly and sitting out in the rain with lots of moisture, there was a thick layer of POR 15 and it had a white haze to it almost like it had been sitting out in the sun and so I peeled that off with the help of a flat screwdriver and some needle nose clean those off real good and now we're left with what looks like regular looking POR 15 so I'm gonna roll with it and uh, see what happens over time Oh, that looks kind of cool. All right, so while that Pour 15 dries a little bit, I've come in here and, and devised my own paint booth. I've never hung anything to paint before, so this will be pretty cool. I've just got some really skinny wire connected to this huge pry bar, and suspended from it are the hood hinges. So now I've scratched these up pretty good. They should be in decent shape to paint. All right, here we go. Remember those things? Yeah, it turns out it's absolutely filthy in and around there. And so I've taken them off, taken the liberty of degreasing and soaking and cleaning these things so I can paint them. Especially in the case of over here. Look at that. That stud is where this arm mounted to. Absolutely disgusting. I'm gonna take off this canister and clean all of this up. Do it now while the damn engine isn't in the way, right? That looks so much better. Everything in here is spotless. We uh, degreased one more time, wire brushed, used blue rags, used that brush down there. We used everything we could that we had to clean this and make sure that the rags 
down in there were coming out decently clean. Okay, we're going to use Tremclad, also known as Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer, as a first coat and then top coat it with Duplicolor Acrylic Enamel. All gone, one can, that whole damn thing. Now, I'm not a professional painter, neither is my girlfriend, but this, I think, turned out pretty damn good if I should say so myself. Some spots are really heavy, some spots are not. What a difference, though. Amazing what a little paint can do. I decided to move outside the shed for this process here. It's a beautiful day outside. There's absolutely no wind whatsoever. Okay, now it is time for some Duplicolor acrylic enamel, and hopefully this stuff will serve as a very good top coat. Okay, it is finally done. That is the last of the last painting this firewall will receive. And then I think I'm gonna get some new finish polish, actually it's wax, and just kinda of go over the top of the cowl. It helps protect it a little bit, make it a little more shiny. Not that it needs to be more shiny, but a little protection goes a long way. You might be wondering, oh, what's the damage? Well, here is the damage. I used one can of Rust Reformer and two cans of Duplicolor Acrylic Enamel. So it looks like three cans in total for a total of, I don't know what that is, like 25 to 30 bucks kind of thing. I don't know if you can tell. You can kind of see some lines here. And that's a, that's a reflection on my poor skills as a painter. Hopefully that'll buff out with some new finish. I don't really care, but it kind of helps maybe, I don't know, whatever. Okay, and here is the finished product. Let's see if it worked. Just got some water here. Seems to have done something. It's all I wanted. Okay, that should do it. So I think next time I'm here, we're gonna be flipping the body. So stay tuned. All right, it is the moment of truth. We're gonna take this Jeep body, it's much later, and flip it up on its side. We're gonna use this corner here as somewhat of a fulcrum. Uh, we'll get it off the uh, these two by fours. We'll use that as a fulcrum as we tip it over onto this piece of wood. The first thing I do is take this whole body and move it this way. Okay, no. Alright, so we're just gonna, gonna let it keep going. 
I, I have no support after this. That's, That's fine, we're good on this side. You, you guys got, you got, you got control? Yeah. Can you hold this down? I'll get the wood under there. Let go. One sec there. All right, so that's what we got. We got a flipped over Jeep body, natural state. Now you can see how much of a god-awful, hideous mess this is under here. There's just, I don't even know where to start. It looks like AIDS. It looks like garbage. All these things here have to be repaired because they're probably too weak for the body mounts. This one's rusted out. This one down here is rusted out. You can't, you can't sit a body on there. It'll just puncture right through. And so first order of business is clean all of this up which is going to take a lot of work maybe i'll sandblast it and then second order of business would be fixing repairing rust and then it's good to go back on the frame which is over there man he's dead <laughs> literally sitting in sunroom Give me one more fucking time, Cole. I swear to fucking God. Boost, boost, boost. I fucking hate you, cunts. Terrorists <laughs> win. Right, right, right. He's right. Cole, right. He's there. Shut up! Brett, Brett. Truck. Brett, Brett. Quad. Brett, he's quad. Brett, quad. Quad, he's quad, red quad, red, red one quad, red quad. Shut up! Please! Oh, oh, so with that sandy jet blaster and after maybe a minute and a half, we're right down to bare metal, just like Jeez. that. You want a sandwich? No. This is why we use a tarp. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, this is what, like 30 minutes later? Now, last time I worked on this body was Nine or ten weeks ago, I've just been tinker dinkering along this frame. I'll just show you right quick. Frame is in excellent condition, and you can see more on this frame on my YouTube channel. But back to the body. So there's a few things we have to do to this thing. First, we have to get all the old body mounts out, right? And of course, Jeep was a bunch of cards when they designed this. Um, these ones you can't get at unless you fit, literally cut a hole where they are. So I'm gonna cut a hole here, peel the metal back so you can access it, take it out. Same with that bottom one. These as well, they are not accessible unless you cut a hole in the floor. So I'll have to do that. That one down there is all rotted out so I don't have to cut a hole. These ones here, I have to cut a hole again. And then these ones here you can access right from the back side here. So a total of one, two, three, four, five, six holes you have to cut in order for this to work. An absolute joke. But for right now, I'm gonna take off this little cover, this heat shield, I think it is, so I can get out the back of it and see if there's any rust I need to take care of. And after that, we're going to uh, see about getting out these body mounts. Once the body mounts come out, then we'll just worry about fixing rust, fixing pinholes. There are pinholes everywhere. This is the driver's side, the side that I, I put a new floor in. But this is the passenger side up here now, and you can see pinholes everywhere. There's just pinholes after pinholes. And where there are pinholes, there is weak metal. So I'm just gonna get some sheet metal and patch this up. I really wish I could have sandblasted this whole thing but the sandblasting solution failed me, so I can't do that. All right, so now that that's off, we'll clean this up.
All right, <laughs> doing a little bit of damage control. I've been grinding away all of the uh, the uh, excess, I don't know, oil, dirt, and a lot of the rust. And look at this. This is garbage. This is toast. And the further you go up, you just keep finding them. Pinholes. Down there is probably the same. Remember that was pretty rusty shape. I still have to fix that. I'm not sure how yet. These two body mounts right here, the rear cross member over the fuel tank, they're in good shape. Just put the bolt in, be done with it. Okay, it is time to expedite this entire process. I'm gonna do this entire body in one day. Well, reality, it should take two weeks to do this at the pace that I work at, but I'm gonna try and get it all done today and the next couple days. Uh, I've got two pieces of two foot by two foot, 24 gauge sheet metal, one piece of, uh, no, that's 22 gauge, one piece of 16 gauge heavier stuff. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that yet besides create that fuel access panel. And I've got a, I got a welder and some other tools. The few major spots we have to take care of right here. This is a structural part of the front of the body. It's completely rotted out there. You can see the hole. Down here, I don't imagine it's any stronger. So I'm gonna fix these up, reinforce them. Basically, this body's fucked because I'm out of time. Because as you can see, it's fall time. The driveway's gone. And snow's are coming. First order of business, we're just gonna quickly measure this, looking like, I don't know, eight inches by foot. Cut a piece eight by foot, should go right over here, bang it in a few spots, uh, weld it in. All right, so now I've got this piece on here. I made a little mark with a silver marker where to grind out some fresh metal to weld to. Once I grind that out, I'll weld in a side, hammer it in because there's a contour here, hammer it in, weld it. I might drill some holes in here for plug welds. It's probably wise, uh, especially around this area. Uh, other than that, I don't care. Just need a patch, paint over it, call it a fucking day. All right, that should about do. I've grinded out a little area here for some plug welds. I'll just kind of remember where that is, but an inch away. So we'll do a couple plug welds here. Maybe we'll try and get some down here and up here. All right, so I got it mostly in here. It's gonna tack it in place. So I learned this new cool thing while I was welding here. If you're in a position where you can't rest one hand on the fork piece, so in that case, I took these pliers, I stick them here like that, and now I have my hand back here, and then I can weld. I can weave, or I can do a stringer, bead, whatever you want. So not only do you use it to push your work piece against a piece of metal, the weld, and then slip off like that, but also, you also use it to rest on and you get a weld done. All right, that's my patch panel times two. Lots of space for water and stuff to get into. So I'm going to degrease it, paint it with the trim clad rust reformer because there's some rust up there. Not that that shit works anyway, who knows? And then after that dries, I'll top coat it with the rubberized undercoating. The rubberized undercoating is thick enough. It'll fill in all the tiny holes and spaces between welds and hopefully prevent water and stuff from getting in there. All right, since I'm painting in pretty much zero degree weather, I have to heat this up first. I'm doing it with a torch. And as you can see, there's lots of moisture. So we're gonna burn it all off. It'll be nice and dry and warm and hot enough so that I can paint. It's just a propane torch. Got the rust reformer here.
All right, I'm gonna let that dry, do its thang, and then I'm gonna top coat it with Plasti Coat rubberized coating. Okay, I used about half a can for all of that. So that's the Plasti Coat we've been using. I heard good stuff about this brand. I've used about half a can to do that much. All right, so I'm working on this body, right? And uh, lo and behold, the smallest tap by that hammer reveals a large hole because the metal here is very, very, very weak, basically powder. <laughs> That's how I feel. So I made this little cover piece. All right, I've got this panel in there. It's pretty shoddy work, but it'll have to do. I'm on a budget of time. Okay, so this is what we've come up with, all right? My dad came up with this idea, which I'm thankful for because I had no idea what to do. Uh, we put this piece in, and then I welded that on. It's, it's welded actually really good. I had the welder on max, that little one over there. And uh, it welded pretty good. I didn't burn through the floor at all. This existing floor seems like it's um, pretty thick material. So all I'm going to do now is reinforce this somehow because this is incredibly weak, as you can see in there. I'm going to reinforce all in here. And, and somehow make way for the body mount. As for the top, yuck, it's uh, also pretty weak. I hit it with a hammer and it feels pretty soft. So I want to uh, reinforce basically everything on the screen right now. This is the uh, seam sealer I'm using, just some Proform PF207. I'm just going to fill in all these holes. All right, so now we're gonna use this AC Delco uh, undercoater with rubber. Nowhere in the city is there plastic coat, so I'm stuck with using this. So this is the new undercoat. You can see it's a little coarser than the stuff I used before, which is right up here. That's the plastic coat. Plastic coat gets a lot of good reviews, but it's really expensive, and there are zero cans in my city. Yo, dude, pass the bison over here. He scared me. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Peek over. Where's CT? Bomb has been planted. You got to be fast. Terrorists win. He's goaded. That's an AC. Those headshots, Jesus Christ. Christ. Please let him be stupid. Please let. Aww. Ah, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> okay, today is body mount day. There are a total of 11 on this thing. There's two in the back. You just basically take a cutoff wheel or a Dremel, you cut three sides, peel the metal back, get at it, 
peel the metal back, it weld it or do something about it and close it off. Nice and easy. Two more body mounts. One right here, one right here. Those are uh, where the rear cross member goes. A couple more body mounts right there. And down here, done some repairs all, already. A couple more body mounts right here and uh, down here. And then there are ones here and ones here. And then there's a final 11th body mount right up here where the radiator is. In my case, up here, if we go around the other side, I move the chair up, you can see right where it's poking through. So what you have to do is cut all of this out, all this metal, so that you can access the body mount. The other two body mounts, I think are somewhere underneath this transition. I don't know yet, I need to figure it out. But I also have to cut apart the floor to get access to them. Body mounts up front here, you can access right from the back. All right, so I use this Dremel here, this Dremel 3000 with the Easy Lock cutting disc. It seemed to work pretty good, I went through two of them. And uh, as you can see here, I cut it out. So now let's try and take this out here. there's the body mount. Okay, so as you can see, I had to cut out a good inch and a half more to then get this body mount to still not come out. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So all it is is a piece of quarter inch steel. So I cleaned in here, and it's a good thing I saved one can of the Eastwood internal frame coating. I'm going to coat the insides of these rails that go under here because as you can see they're rusty and especially on the bottom case right it is not looking too good and uh, all that metal that you see right there is just completely shot so I need to figure out a way to make that sturdy. These are the channels I'm talking about. That one, that one, this one here and this one only to be internally coated with the internal frame coating now you could coat it with sort of any sort of rust paint but getting it in there is the problem that's why I got Eastwoods because they come with a two foot extension hose that has a little tip on the end of it which helps spray the paint I'm gonna work on these for now I'm just gonna cut it with the big grinder Just like that, you can see the uh, body mount in there. So all I have to do now is tap it loose. Same thing as before, the quarter inch backing plate there. Something like that. I'm gonna check this out. There are insects in there. What does that tell you about Jeep's ability to seal something? They're relatively clean. You can see all the rust in there. So it would be a great idea to get a rust encapsulator or some sort of rust stopping paint or primer or whatever, just to stop that rust or slow it down at least. Unless you feel like spending a hundred billion years repairing the body. So right here where the floor ramps down like this. I think the cab mount is going to be right under here somewhere. I don't know the best way to get at these, uh, especially if they're right underneath the seat. It's right about here. All right, great. So by the looks of it, the <laughs> mount is right in here. So we can do two things. We can cut an access panel in here like that, or we can cut an access panel on the other side right in here. It's probably easier to go from the inside, especially if I run out of time and I can't weld this for some reason. At least I'll, 
I can weld from the inside. So let's go and cut an access panel on the inside. First I'll take some measurements from there to there, and then we'll do that. So there's the mark there. If you're following along and you don't want to measure it for yourself, uh, just go from the top inside of this thing, so from the inside here down to there. That's nine inches to the center of the bolt. And then I just made a four inch, you know, four inches from here to here. Hopefully that's enough room. And I think I can get at that with a grinder, at least the long one, and then the rest I'll do with the dribble. So there it is there. And uh, again, there's this cover. I don't know what it's for. Maybe it just holds it in place or something while they screw it on. There we go. Yes. I wonder if the new master kit is going to come with these quarter inch plates or washers or something. I'm not even sure. So I got the one down here and it created a huge mess. There is so much rust scale in there but it's all open and clear now so i'm just going to clean this all up clean them all out this one up here you can see some small little flakes and stuff i'm just going to take the air hammer and sort of chisel that all out so it's nice and clean and so that when i paint it with the internal frame coating these flakes don't just flake off if you're from driving around in vibration so it'd be a better shot at keeping rust free if you take the flakes, the loose stuff out. This is the air hammer I'm using. It's pretty good. All right, since I'm ahead of schedule, I decided to take this thing off just to see how bad it is on the other side. Just a few screws and little things you gotta pop out. There you go. Let's check it out. So, not too bad, obviously. No rust there, that's good. So basically all I have to do is clean this up, you know, get rid of the dirt and degrease it, paint it, and put the fender liner back, and then we're good to go. So upon taking out the lower fender liner, I noticed that there is a gaping hole here amongst this thing, which makes it weak. So, I made myself a little patch panel, which is going to go something like that. Now I'll just weld it in, and that should make it a lot more rigid. And there's the finished product there. Check this out, okay? Check this out. This is 24 gauge sheet metal. You can see how incredibly thin the sheet metal is. That added so much rigidity, I'm not even laughing right now this is amazing it's just a series of tack welds and terrible tack welds at that and it's not even welded on the back side and this has become a shockingly amount more rigid if that is even english anywho i'm going to now clean these fender areas and uh paint them same with up here paint these and then i'm going to internal coat uh, all of these areas here and then tomorrow I'll paint the entire rest of this and then the next day the body mounts will get here and I'll have the uh, engine crane and we can put it back on top of the frame all right so I masked off some areas I'm using the uh, um, tube that came with the uh, internal frame coating by Eastwood, right? Uh, I used this on the frame video and it's been sitting for a long time. I made sure to tip the can upside down and spray it out and it seemed to, to uh, oh, now it's, now it's stuck. Oh Lord. Now, now it's, now I gotta use a new one. All right, so I made a new one. This comes with the Eastwood, it's my last one. Oh, and looks like there's paint coming up. So, uh, oh, I guess we'll try this. Just gonna mix this up a little more.
Okay, I'm going to continue on and I'll get back to you guys when I've finished up here. All right, all the internal coating is done. You can see some green mist. I had a little bit extra in the can. I just flipped on the uh, original tip and just kind of sprayed around here. I really wish I had more of this stuff. I feel like it's going to do a hell of a lot better job than the Tremclad Rust Reformer. So I went and sprayed over here as well. Tried to get a little bit in there as much as I can. I got a little bit back there just for the heck of it. You can see just how much better it looks. Now in some areas, if you have a look down here, this is the tape I pulled off. In some areas you can see we got good coverage, good coverage, eh, and then not great. And then some pieces of tape didn't have any green on them whatsoever. So you put it over top of a hole and there's no green on it whatsoever. So that's bad coverage. So what I could have done is did a much better job in the end. Okay, it is a all right, is a another day. Okay, it is another day on the Jeep. Oh, I suck. Another day on the bike. All I have to do today is clean the rest of this, okay, uh, with some degreaser and then paint everything. All of this paint is, is dried and I almost cut myself. Careful. So I'm just going to clean everything, degrease it with some TSP, trisodium phosphate. It's a good, cheap degreaser. And also, as you can tell, this thing is really low. Like, here's my head. Uh, so what I have to do is lift this up, jack it up a, a foot or two so we can put the body on the thing and then, you know, drive the Jeep out. Because I think the Jeep would be too tall for the top of this thing. Anyway, let's get to it, enough ramble. All right, I'm gonna let this dry a little bit uh, just in nature. I tried to make sure I got everything pretty good. Now there's still some spots, as you can see right there, that are a little bit um, greasy, etc. Uh, but I cleaned off most of it. Like you can see here, it's it's pretty darn clean. Um, here it's pretty clean. Here it's not bad. Down on this thing, it's not terrible. Over here, there's a little bit of muck. Uh, right in those crevices, there's a little bit of muck. I could take the extra few steps and get everything super duper clean. Uh, just as a backyard guy, you know, you do have the tools. You just need a wire brush and about 400 days. And then you get everything really clean. But in my case, I uh, am pressed for time. So I just have to do as best as I can uh, in the time that I have. Best. Before, after. Time for the first coat of Rust Reformer.
it's looking pretty spiffy. Check this out. So I got really good coverage amongst the entire bottom. Everywhere you can imagine, there's paint, even in here. Now in here is a bit of a tough, tough spot. So what I'm gonna do is get the Cosmoline and just kill the effing, ever living shit out of this with Cosmoline because it's easier to spray than the rubberized coating. Same with in here. You can see I didn't really get right here too well. Uh, so we're going to spray with Cosmoline RP342 just like I did with my frame. And we'll coat the inside of this. It'll creep into all the corners and stuff, which is where you want it. And as for the rest of this thing, and as for the rest of this thing, it is looking pretty awesome. I got a few more things to paint uh, down there, and I still have to top coat it with the uh, rubberized undercoating. You know, one thing I'd like to note quick, if you're painting with the AC Delco stuff, and it says that it's flammable. It probably is. The whole side of the Jeep just went up in flames, off camera, of course. Check this out. I'll spray a little on there. And I'm heating up with a stove. Boom. It's very flammable. But as soon as it dries, it's okay. This is the before and after undercoating. This is the before. And this is the after. Now I did Cosmoline some areas, as you can see, it's a little shiny here. I Cosmoline uh, all in here, uh, down there, in those ones and a few other spots as more rust prevention. I also painted the heat shield that goes here and the shield that goes there. I degreased it, painted it, looks pretty good, etc, etc. So now I've got some cowl stuff here, uh, some brackets and this canister and that thing. I'm going to put them all back now. I can't wait till this thing is done. I mean, there's lots of work to do still. I mean, you have the back door, you have, you know, rust behind that light. It's kind of rust everywhere still, but it's minor rust. It's not structural rust where you can poke holes through the frame and through the floor and stuff like that. It's just kind of surface rust. That's easy to take care of for a guy like me. It's easy cake to block. Here I am assembling the cowl. There are a few brackets to put on, uh, namely these ones. I have a reference photo because there are three that go in a specific order over here and then two down there and I had them all mixed up. I think this one here goes like that. I'm just in the midst of putting on putting on the hardware. So I'm going to finish that up and then get right back at you. Alright so there are the two pieces that I painted before were covered with muck and rust and garbage. Now if I do say so myself, they look pretty damn fine. My goodness, that's professional grade. Mm. Put everything back together on the front cowl here. I think everything is correct. There's that there, and there's the ones on the bottom. And then I put that canister back, that thing. The hood mounts loosely fit, obviously. And then I put this thing back. This thing is all janky together. All the existing holes are reamed out too big. And then this thing was cracked and warped, so uh, it basically it's, it's just there for show. So yeah, that is the cowl in its glory. I think everything is good to go. There are some, you know, minor things. We have to reattach some wires. I don't know where these go. This one hasn't hooked up. I don't know where these go. Some wires down here, hoses, hoses. All right, time to put these liners back. It's another beautiful day. Let's just sort of slide in there. Okay, now I will attempt to heat this up. As you can see, it's uh, a little wrinkly in some spots, so I'm just gonna heat it up so I can bend it and form it, and then put some screws in, some new ones, 
just kind of all around. Should be good to go. And there it is, down, ready to go. We got the engine hoist thing, crane. Crown, you butt, you moved it. So yeah, I'd appreciate if you stop doing that. Well, Sammy, anyway, let's move this frame. All right, you have finally made it to the end of this long video. Now, I want to make two points before I leave. Point number one. No more long videos. I thought it would be really cool to have everything said and done in one video. It's, I think it's a really neat format, but I just don't think that my style of video making, content making, fits the bill. If you're going to do everything in one video, you have to skip a lot of detail. And I'm, I'm not the, your typical like uh, auto body shop TV show where they have a, a thousand trillion dollars in parts and they go talk about it for two seconds and then the next clip is the part already installed I like to sort of go through the middle area I like to show some of the install explain a little bit of what I'm doing show me tightening bolts loosening bolts and that takes a lot of time as you can see this is hours and hours of footage all condensed to less than an hour so going forward in the Rover one project I think I'm gonna do it in parts so a video like this would be done in like five or six parts, I'm thinking. 15 to 20 minutes per part, easier to follow, got something to look forward to the next video. I could fit more detail in, maybe I could have background, music, I don't really know. Anywho, the next video coming up is going to be putting the body back onto the frame. So if you're interested in that, keep following along and uh, cue the outro. Hey, if you made it this far, I just want to say a few more things. Thank you for tuning into this build. The Rover One has been an amazing inspiration to me, to a few other people, and I cannot wait to keep doing it. Number two, if you want to know more about the Rover One or more about me, Instagram's in the description. Number three, 5,000 subscribers special. It's going to be amazing. I'm not telling you what it is, but part two of it is I'm going to launch a Discord chat specifically for the Rover One. So if you want to tune in, share some ideas, or just play some video games with me, feel free. Last thing, there's the Rover One playlist. There is my most recent video, and there's that subscribe button. So thank you guys, and until further news, I shall talk to you later.